thank you for your visionary leadership and your ownership over this mission for peace. I believe it has been mentioned several times today in this plenary, but I would like to mention once again. You know, there are few men and women in history that have such a profound effect that their legacy continues to live on even though their life have passed. I believe that Nelson Mandela is one such figure who carried on the message of true love, even loving thy enemy, to build the bridges of peace that could, that could heal the wounds of the experience of segregation that had separated two races in South Africa, setting a precedent of leadership rooted on principles and values. And as someone who has a kindred spirit at heart, who shares that humanity is truly one family under God, and that humanity needs precedence like the life that he has lived. Once again, I would like to extend my condolences to his family, but more importantly, to make the commitment with all of us here that we shall carry on that legacy through our work by, the, by being owners of that vision of one family to God, being the peace builders in our communities, our nations, our regions, our continent, and events of the world. So once again, could we give, them, give Nelson Mandela a round of applause? We also need to remember the tragedy that humanity has faced, especially in this region of Malaya, with the tragedy in the Philippines and even the recent floods here. So could we take a moment to give remembrance, remembrance to those who have suffered and who are no longer with us, and the families that continue to persist under those very difficulties? Could we just give a moment of silence in remembrance of that. Thank you. The theme of this year's convention is unity in diversity, building social cohesion for sustainable peace through universal aspirations, principles, and values. Malaysia is the right place to discuss such a theme and to craft initiatives based upon it. Malaysian society is multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multicultural, and democratic. As such, you are uniquely positioned to offer the world a successful example of unity and diversity, where all the parts, while retaining their own unique religious and cultural identity, cooperate together for the greater good of the larger society. Malaysia is a country on the rise. In recent years, you have experienced impressive economic growth. Malaysia has also taken on greater leadership roles in this region, hosting and mediating peace talks between the Philippine government and parties in Mindanao, for example. And globally, through the Prime Minister's launch of the global movement of moderates. For Malaysia, as for many emerging countries, this is a moment of historic transition. The prospects of the future are bright, but there are serious challenges that need to be faced. Most importantly, the identity-based conflicts based on ethnic and religious differences. The threat of inter-religious conflict is the most serious and extends beyond individual nations. It has the chilling potential to become global in scale. With the end of the Cold War, the two competing ideologies, ideological blocks, fragmented, spurring the rise of identity-based conflicts, first in the Balkans and Central Asia, while fueling ongoing conflicts in the Middle East, South Asia, and parts of Africa. It is clear that with the rise of such sectarian conflicts, the geopolitical dynamic has been reconfigured through politicized forms of religion, operating on a regional scale and claiming a spurious 
legitimacy from the great faith traditions. As history has shown, the ferocity and ruthlessness of such inter-religious conflicts is something that humanity cannot afford, especially in this age where weapons of mass de destruction, such as nuclear, chemical, or biologic, have proliferated throughout the world. Unlike the Cold War era, where two rational protagonists played the game of nuclear deterrence, a religious conflict or a class of, clash of civilizations will not be constrained by reason, but fired by passion that could lead humanity to commit the greatest sins against itself in the name of religion. As a man of faith, I believe that these developments should be a clarion call for all true men and women of faith to become the true peacemakers of this age. A true interfaith movement should emerge at this time that can bring the different faiths, traditions to work together in harmony, not to further their own particular agendas, but upon a common platform of universal aspirations principles and values. As people of faith, we should recognize that we have more in common than we have in our differences. We all aspire to establish peace on earth, to recognize the value of human life, to recognize the importance of individual responsibility in living according to the laws of nature and heaven, and of the individual conscience in guiding us to do so, and to realize that we are truly one family under God. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if we strip ourselves of our pretensions and we stand honest and naked before God and all humanity, we are all the same. If we strip ourselves of our national pretensions, our racial pretensions, our religious pretensions, we will recognize our common humanity and our common destiny to live a life of co-prosperity and peace. On the basis of this vision that so powerfully expresses our fundamental human aspirations, the great faith traditions can unite and work together. Then they will not only counter religious radicalism, but uphold the fundamental human rights and freedoms through the universal principles and moral values that they share in common. From this foundation, a global ethic can then be developed that will provide the moral and cultural framework of a peaceful and harmonious world. The GPF approach is both timely and relevant. It addresses one of the most pressing contemporary threats to peace, namely the possibility of global religious conflict. Our, our approach is different from the past interreligious initiatives, which focus solely on dialogue and mutual understanding among the different faiths. GPS initiatives are multi-sectoral, engaging partners not just from the faith community, but political leaders, educators, business people, and social entrepreneurs as well. Our projects are practical, bringing faith communities to work together to change attitudes and thus behaviors in order to solve social problems and resolve conflict. The new and very different geopolitical dynamic of today calls for fresh thinking and new initiatives. With that in mind, I propose that we establish a faith-based peace council at the United Nations to meet the global challenge of identity-based conflicts. Through such a council, the collective wisdom and resources of the world's great faith traditions can be mobilized to counter the radical elements that are distorting the original spirit of those traditions. We need to recognize the power of religious authority in amplifying the message of peace to local constituents in the most troubled hotspots of the world. They represent a largely untapped resource for peace. Yet, because they are deeply rooted in their communities, they are far more effective peace builders 
than the United Nations blue helmets who can only contain the levels of violence. When local faith leaders become true owners of the vision of peace, they will inspire their constituents to act in ways to build real, lasting peace. This process is already happening in a very real way here in Nigeria, where Christians and Muslim leaders are preparing, partnering with GPF to take on the one family under God message to every single local community in that nation. Their example of religious cooperation and unity is a powerful statement against religious violence of the Boko Haram extremists. Several of those Christian pastors and Muslim imams are here with us today at this convention. Let us give them a round of applause. Please stand so we can recognize their leadership. that I'm calling for would find a powerful public voice in this council working within the institution of the United Nations. To establish the council, it will need the, the crucial support of several nations with the support of the international religious leadership to take the lead in advocating for its creation. I hope that Malaysia will be a champion for this endeavor. Malaysia can play a unique role here as a Muslim nation. Malaysia can also become a global leader through demonstrating that Islam is a force for peace in the world. Through, po <laughs> through pioneering a model of social cohesion and unity with Christianity, Buddhism, and Hinduism, the other great faith traditions present here. This country can powerfully dispel many of the violent and negative stereotypes that color the perception of Islam in the West and other parts of the world. I believe that we stand in a moment of historic transition, not just for Malaysia, but for the world. The time for discussion is over. The time for leadership is here. True leaders have a vision and pursue it single-mindedly. Their strength comes from moral authority, like our beloved statesman in Africa, Nelson Mandela. That moral authority is rooted in spiritual principles that then are mobilized to engage social change. True leaders are innovative. They clear the way, clear away the log jams of the past through fresh thinking, changing the framework of the debate, and establishing new precedents. These precedents replace old, corrupt habits, establishing new ethical standards that are the basis of a new culture. You have all gathered here because you share the hope of a peaceful world rooted in the vision of one family under God. You, you share the principles and the values that bring us together in this common cause. Now is the time to take up our responsibility, to give substance to our hopes and shape our vision. I call, I call upon all of you here to join with me in a mission of creating the institutions and structures that will advance the cause for peace. Let us create a global movement of faith communities working together as a powerful social and cultural force for peace as they are doing in Nigeria but on a global scale. Can you do this? Yes or no? Yes. Let us establish the Faith-Based Peace Council as part of the United Nations. Can we do this? Yes or no?